G'day, hello everyone again. This is a be all about the appointments this session. So nearing to beer o'clock here, but if you bear with me, uh, wherever you are in the world, um, we're going to have some fun with this one. This is going to be an interesting conversation. So let's get into it. Appointments. Um, Appointments are probably the lifeblood of most of the business types that High Level was originally probably created for to help facilitate appointments. With the sophistication in and around the calendar system, you can kind of tell that the amount of flexibility that's there can do a lot of stuff. But what I wanted to talk about today was the confirmation process that you let the customer decide on can really be really powerful, right? And, and um, I don't think it can be understated. So I wanted to emulate the type of conversation that I would have during a sales presentation, talking about this type of thing. And I guess this would be something where it's more related to people in the field than back office stuff, but you could do a blend of the two types of you know people, field sales, knowledge workers, uh, etc. cetera. Um, but also distributed workforces and mobile workers, this works really well for too. So there's no real boundaries with, you know, the types of uh, the people that would, this would be suited for. There is some use cases that I think are really good where there's people that aren't necessarily tech savvy, right? Um, or you make the assumption they're not so tech savvy. They've got mobile devices, they can click buttons, but they want that to then, you know, do stuff. So anyway, enough about me. Let's talk about appointments. So... If you're talking about appointments with a customer, right, now let's just take a, an example over here. Um, you would have a calendar and that calendar is designed to drive appointments. Now, you know that there's an appointment report and of course you could book an appointment manually and then there's a bunch of different statuses that relate to the appointments, right? So with the calendars, um, you would say like we basically set up an infinite number of calendars that belong to an individual or you can have a number of team calendars and I think they're now called groups, right? So at the time of filming this, they just made a change now calling them groups, right? So there you go. But, you know, long story short, if we look at the properties of any of these calendars, on the confirmation page, there's a few things that we want to talk about here. So the first thing is, do we want to let the calendar auto-confirm your appointment? So basically that's saying if you are found as being available, you're automatically confirming that you are then, it's confirmed. The status of that appointment is confirmed. The other thing is that you can put a new appointment alert email in and you'll get an internally created alert email that looks like this. And I think I get them from my colleague Piper. Piper, Piper, Piper. And there we go, new appointment request, right? Now these are internal GHL emails, right? But you then have the ability to review the request, it's already confirmed. But then of course you can go to this page, review the request, sorry here, no, wherever I was, back on the appointment reports. And then you're updating the status, right? So that's interesting, right? So when you're having conversations with customer, you can be like, all right, so let's talk about this, right? If I'm selling to a plumber or some sort of home services you know, type person, right? They need to go to the appointments. So it's not just straightforward beauty salon use case where people are turning up, right? We want to throw in the mix. What if they're meant to go to the customer's house, you know, to the building that they have to do the work on or whatever. And then they're not there, right? So maybe they do want to keep track of the efficiencies of how many appointments are kept because if they can't gain access to the property, usually what that means is they need to take a photo um, show that they tried to, or they tried to access the property, they couldn't send that to the customer. 
and then they need to move on to the next uh, location. Usually that location needs to be somewhere geographically uh, suitable. So there's going to be a proximity where they're going to design. It's almost like a milk run that they do throughout the day, right? So the implications of uh, this appointment not being kept for those types of businesses is massive, right? And of course, when we flip that over on its head, if you've got a brick and mortar location, people not turning up, huge waste of money, you know, having people standing around the store when they could have been having a customer um, is a huge uh, loss in revenue and blah, 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 right? So we all know that. But those two things together create crazy amounts of complexity um, and hopefully you're selling to more than one business type, right? So anyway, I would always recommend that you put this in, right? Because then you get the email, new appointment's been made, do I want to confirm it? You can just delete it, it's already confirmed. Or you press that green button in that email and you review the request and then you can be like, no, it needs to be rescheduled. No, I need to do this, whatever, right? Because you don't always put, you know, your nan's funeral and uh, various other things in your business calendar, do you, right? So you want to have the right first right of refusal, but not the obligation to attend that meeting. Okay, so there we go. Um, then you want to say, you know, do we want to allow them to reschedule, right? And if you tick it on, it dumps that link in there. And if you want them to cancel, it, you know, dumps it in there, right? Great. The other thing when you talk about this is, do you want to ask the customer if they're manually confirming their appointments or not to volunteer more information than they otherwise would other than their first name, phone number, and the time that they want to meet you? This is a great opportunity to, one, remarket to them even if they don't make an appointment with you for the next 90 days or however long third-party pixel tracking is going to be around for on Facebook and Google and whatever else by dropping those pixels in. Then, you know, you can also say, in addition to this, um, let's attach a form, right? And any form, qualifying questions can be asked, right? So different appointment reports, is there a dog on the property? You know, has it been put away, blah, 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 blah. Those are the types of things that might be really important to create those appointments. Um, waiver certificates and so on. So I know here in Australia, NDIS, you know, those types of organizations, they're really based on appointments, but they need to be able to gain access to the property. There needs to be no dangerous dogs. Dogs need to be kept inside, blah, blah, blah. All these types of things that, you know, dump that in the form when they're making the appointment to make sure that they've filled the prerequisites out. That can apply to a million and one use cases, right? So these links are super powerful as well, right? So the customer just gets them as like crappy, you know, links, right? When they get their thing, fine. It doesn't need to be, you know, anything more than that, right? But then if you want this to be sort of more robust and user-friendly, what you can do then is you can say, okay, well, the confirmations are going to come to you one minute after or five minutes after the time of the event comes to your phone and you just design a nice little um, utility right email right so then it kind of just looks on this like they get on this on their on their phone right and it's like did you know such and such show up did uh, you know were you able to to, to uh, gain access to the property and do whatever right have some nice buttons right and so I want to go oh, I want to go and click on that and it's going to take me to the contact record, right? So I'm going to actually go to that contact. Now this is not actually on any contact, so it's not going to work, but you can do that. So then I can see the information about the person. Did they leave a note? Was there any conversations that they'd sent me a message or something like that? Otherwise you could just click showed, you know, need that button because it'll be confirmed by default. Otherwise you can go, oh, they needed to reschedule or cancel. Now those links, if you remember, Right, there are actions that can be used. Right, so I mean, this people might know this already, but like I just you know think it's pretty hidden, right? So you can be like, all right, well, this button is an other, and the other action is the appointment, and that is the appointment reschedule link. Crazy, right? I don't know if people know this stuff, but think it's largely not really spoken about right make it an amber button because it's rescheduled so it's not a green but it's not a red and then the other one's red because they've cancelled right and then if you click that button maybe you need to add in addition to you know so you would have a workflow to say while well, they've clicked cancelled therefore add a tag 
cancelled, needs to be nurtured back to an appointment. So then maybe a week later, you have a follow-up voicemail, drop SMS, you know, you, have, you want to build your booking, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, an example of what you would do, I don't know, in this the case where you would say, let them determine the outcome of the appointment is is a confirmation a confirmation email before it you get a reminder one hour before you get a reminder and then all the way through you're saying well did they click any of those links right did they click confirm did they click reschedule did they click this and then of course you have to make a decision on what you want to do with that information so yeah appointments not that's straightforward right and there's a lot more that i haven't talked about here but you know my videos are usually watched to about four minute mark so if you're still watching at this point good on you right surely that's worthy of a like and a subscribe if you're new to my channel anyway hope this inspires more sales uh for anybody that's running a high level based business have a great friday afternoon uh if it's not friday you'll be there soon have a good one stay frosty cheers